We did uh, a, a report generally on um, the importance of reduction of distortions in the Indian economy. And we did two sub-studies on cotton, textile, garments, and civil aviation. Um, the reason why I think these reports are important is because no one has really done um, an analysis of the benefits, the economic benefits that can come from a reduction of distortions. Um, we were able to look at an undistorted environment um, in India and see how much economic growth and how much wealth could be created. Um, the significance of the report is that what we found was that massive transformational economic growth could occur in India if there was a reduction of distortions. So India would go from being 167th in the world in terms of GDP per capita to being about 65th. That the economy as a whole would be the fifth or sixth biggest economy in the world. And that um, you could actually, if you eliminated all distortions in India, um, which is obviously a a, a um, aspirational goal, but you could actually eliminate to poverty, absolute poverty in India completely. So that's 600 million people being lifted out of poverty. Um, so that's the significance, I think, of the report. The reason we went to India was to actually make an impact. I think you're right, a lot of these studies do remain um, on shelves. They don't actually impact the market. We wanted to go to India, we wanted to present it to policymakers and thought leaders in India and explain what, what the stakes are, that the stakes are incredibly high, that wealth is being destroyed out of the Indian economy at this rate now, and that if we could actually eliminate these distortions and show them the policy prescriptions, that even if we got 20 or 30 percent of what we're recommending, it would still be a tremendous, um, a tremendous opportunity for the Indian economy. I think one of the problems has been that we focused a lot on elimination of trade barriers and property rights protection and we haven't looked very much at the impact of regulatory distortions and, and what we've termed anti-competitive market distortions. Um, so we haven't really, no one has really quantified what that means. I think we all generally understand that if you eliminate these distortions there is non-zero sum growth in an economy, but no one has really understood quite how much that means. I and mean, the gains from trade are three or four percent. The gains from reduction of distortions are orders of magnitude um, bigger than that. Uh, and so I think that's uh, a new um, tool that we have that we're able to quantify the, 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 these distortions. And a government needs to see that. They need to see what will happen if they do the things that are being suggested of them. But I think a lot of governments, you know, it seems intuitively obvious that if you do these things and you're going to get these huge benefits, why don't you naturally and obviously do it? Um, you don't naturally and obviously do it, in, particularly in developing countries, because there are tremendous beneficiaries of these distortions, very powerful vested interest elites and crony capitalists and so forth who benefit from all of these distortions. And the people who benefit um, are very loath to let their, their distortions go. So they will hold on to them uh, and they will prevent reform. And this is what happens in India, in Brazil, in countries around the world. So we'll be doing a series of case studies on those kinds of countries to show what could be achieved if distortions were eliminated. I would say that certainly when Prime Minister Modi came in, there was a view that, that he was going to be business friendly, he was going to change the, the license raj, the regulatory barriers in India that we all know about. Um, and he, um, to be fair, did move uh, down, along that, in that direction. The issue I think now is whether Modi is, and the Modi administration, is market friendly or business friendly. Now you can be both business friendly and market friendly, but you can also be business friendly and not market friendly, and so support the particular vested interest elites, particular Indian companies, particular powerful interests in the country, make their lives easier, but not actually uh, allow the forces of competition to prevail in the Indian economy. And I think that's an open question now. I think a lot of the reforms that we've suggested, if they go down that road, if they start to pursue them, then it will be an indication that, that he's actually 
market friendly um, and consumer welfare oriented, which is I think where the, the tremendous gains for the Indian economy might come.